All right, uh, let us persist in programming our physics engine. Today, what we're going to do is continue finding contact points, and specifically the contact point singular between a convex polygon and a circle. In our engine right now, we have boxes, which are convex polygons, and we have circles. So what I want to do here is find the closest point on a convex polygon to a circle. Let's go ahead and draw what that looks like. So if we have a random polygon out in space, here's a box, just like it might exist in our engine at some point. And then we have a circle intersecting the box at some point here. Here's the circle center. And so what we want to do is find this point right here where the circle and the box are intersecting. And the way we're going to do that is by looping through each one of the edges and treating each edge as a line segment and then finding the closest point on this line segment to the circle center. But in order to determine which point is the closest, we have to loop through every segment and find the segment that has the closest point to the circle center. I've already recorded a video that uh, explains exactly how we're going to do this. So if you'd like more of a deep dive or a more in-depth explanation about how this algorithm works, it basically finds the closest point on a line segment to another random point in two-dimensional space. I'll have a link to that video in the description of this video as well as on this video here as well. Okay, let's go back to the code. Here we are in the flat world, and here's the actual collision case. And after we find a collision between two bodies, we are finding the contact points in our collisions class. So let's go ahead and go to that function. Inside this find contact points function, we have various different types of cases for, for different types of contacts. So we could have polygon to polygon, and in our engine, it's just uh, those are boxes, so we're treating them as boxes right now. We have the possibility of two boxes intersecting, or two polygons. But today we're going to tackle the case where a polygon intersects a circle. So let me scroll down here and let's make another one of these find contact point functions. Okay, so we're going to pass in the circle information, which is the center and the radius. And then we're going to pass in the polygon information, which is the center of the polygon and the polygon transform vertices. Right. And in this case, there is only one possible point of contact, so we're going to pass out a flat vector that has the contact point. All right, so let's go ahead and drop these parameters down to the next line, just so they're easier to read. All right, so now let's loop through every edge of the polygon, and we're going to do that by looping through all of the vertices. And we're going to get the two points associated with the, uh, this edge or this line segment on the polygon. I'm going to call the first point uh, VA, and that'll just be the current vertex. And the next one is going to be VB, and that's just going to be the next vertex. Okay, and uh, we're actually applying the remainder operator to the length of the vertices, so then if we get to the end, it'll loop back around. All right, so now we need to compare this edge, or this line segment between VA and VB, to the circle center. And I actually don't have a function for that yet. So let's go ahead and write that up real quick inside this collisions class. Okay, and I'm just going to call this the point segment distance. So it's going to actually return the, the distance between a line segment and a point, and then it's also going to return the actual contact point or the actual closest point to the point in space. So the first parameter is going to be the actual point, and in this case, it's going to be the circle center. So point P will be the circle center. And then let's pass in the actual endpoints of the line segment. I'm just going to call that A and B. Okay, and then we want to pass out the distance. I'm actually going to make this the distance squared. So I'm going to get the distance squared because I want to avoid the square root. And we're only doing comparisons, so we don't really need the actual distance. We're just going to compare relative distances. And so we can use the distance squared to make that comparison. Let's actually pass out the contact point as well. And I can just call that the contact. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and write this algorithm uh, real quick right here. Again, if you want to see exactly how this works, go ahead and check the link in the description below. I'll have the link to the video. Uh, the video is called Point Line Segment Distance, but I'm also going to try and have a link in the video here itself if you want to pause and check that out. Okay, and at this point, I need to get the length squared of this vector AB. 
and my math library does not have a distance or length squared function. So let's go back into the math, flat math. Okay, and you can see we have a distance and a length formula. Let's go ahead and make a length squared and a distance squared formula as well. And it's going to be exactly like the length formula. It's just, we're just going to do everything except the square root. Let's do the same thing for the distance formula. All right, so let's go back to the collisions class and finish the point segment distance formula. Okay, so now at this point, we can actually determine where the point is on the line segment that is closest to the other point in space. All right, so we now have the closest point on the line segment to the other point in two dimensional space. Let's go ahead and return the distance squared. And that's all there is to that function. Let's go back to our find contact point function. All right, so now for every edge, I'm going to call that point segment distance function. So the point we want to find the distance to is the actual circle center. Then the uh, endpoints of the line segment are going to be VA and VB. And let's pass out the distance squared and the actual candidate for the contact point. So the, this is going to be the candidate for the contact point. I'll just call it contact. And now we need to make some comparisons here and we need to find the actual shortest distance. And so this distance squared, we need to record it if it's the actual shortest distance. I'm going to make another variable and I'm going to call this the min distance squared. And we're just going to set that to the floating point max value right now. And I'm actually going to shorten this variable name a little bit. So let's call it distance squared and abbreviate it just like that. Okay, so if the distance squared of this particular comparison between the line segment and the circle center is less than the min distance squared, uh, that means that this new contact is the closest one that we found so far, and we want to record that. So let's save the min distance squared to be the, the distance squared we just found. And then the closest point, or this contact point, we're going to save as the contact we just found. And that's everything we need to do there. The, uh, the last thing and the last thing I need to do is this is actually giving me an error because I'm not uh, giving CP a default value or making sure that it's assigned before the function exits. So let's just give it a zero vector as the default. All right, so that's the whole function for finding contact point between our circle and our polygon. I just need to put this now inside of this function and so we want to find the case where we have a box and then a circle, which is going to be this one right here. And so let's use the find contact point function. All right, so the first thing he wants is the actual circle center, and that's going to be right here. Shape B is a circle, so we're going to get the body B position, and then we'll get the body B radius. Okay, next it wants the polygon center and the polygon vertices. So shape A is the actual polygon, so let's pass the uh, body A. And then we're going to get the transform vertices from body A as well. So always make sure we're using the, the transform vertices. And then let's pass out the contact point. And uh, we want to save that to the first contact, which will be this one here, contact 1. So there's only one contact, so we're going to set the contact count to 1. So that takes care of that case. There's actually one more case down here where we have a circle and a box. I'm just going to copy what we did here and let's move it down to this case as well. Now in this case, body A is the circle. So I'm going to change A to get the position and the radius. Then body B is the polygon. So let's change body B to get the polygon position and body B to get the transform vertices. And that should be everything we need to do now to get all the contact points between those two shapes. Um, next time we'll start working on the polygon to polygon contact points. And that one's going to be just a little bit more complicated. It's going to be very similar to this one, but it's going to go a little bit farther in depth because there's a possibility of two contact points. And so we have to loop through the edges of both polygons to determine which edges or points are closest to each other. Let's go back to our flat world and let's go ahead and run it and see how it looks for finding the contact points between our circles and our polygons. Okay, so here's a, a polygon to polygon intersection. We haven't found the contact points for that quite yet, so we're not seeing any, but let's go ahead and put a circle here as well and just see how it looks. And actually that doesn't look exactly right. Let's put it here. That one does, but 
there it does not there it does not okay so it's not getting the right point let's go ahead and check our code real quick to see if i've made any any typos first of all okay so here we are in the point segment distance formula we're getting the two vectors we're projecting the vectors we're getting the length squared contact point looks good here, okay so here's the problem this is a typo right here we don't want the distance squared between AP and the contact. We want the actual distance squared between this, this point here. So this is going to be point P. So we want the distance squared between the point we're passing in and the actual contact or the closest point on the line segment. And you know what? This, this actually, I don't really like the name here, contact. So I'm going to change this to be closest point, so CP. And let's just change that for everything in our function. Yeah, and that, I like the way that looks a little bit better. So this is actually the closest point to point P on the line segment. And so that was just a typo there. We want this distance squared should work now. Let's go ahead and run that and see how it looks. Okay, so polygon to polygon still doesn't work yet, but that looks a lot better. So that looks exactly right now. So we're getting the, the actual contact point between a circle and a polygon. And let's just throw a bunch of shapes in here and just kind of see how it looks. And just looking at it, I can see that it looks like the po contact points are being found correctly. Uh, we have circle to circle. We have circle to polygon. Uh, that looks great. Now I've got one more thing before we close this video I'd like to work on inside of our flat world. Right here, I'm saving a contact points list. And this is basically just a list of all the contacts that are happening, so then I can display them later. But what's happening here is the way this loop works, I'm probably adding the same contact over and over and over and over because of the nature of the way the loop iterates, because we have more than one iteration when we're resolving the collisions. So what I want to do is before we add a contact to the contact points list, I just want to make sure that the contact isn't already in the list. So let's check if the contact points list contains the contact. So what I'm doing here is I'm just checking the list, making sure it does not contain that contact. And if it doesn't, let's add it to the list. And let's do the same thing down here for this one as well, contact point two. It's going to copy and paste that in there. Let's make sure this is contact two. We can run that, make sure it still looks exactly like we thought. And I'm happy with these results. That looks exactly like what I wanted. We're getting the exact contact point. Go ahead and throw some boxes in here and some random circles. All right, so that's how we're going to find the contact point between a circle and a polygon.